We left off on Nun Heum and Beis towards the bottom. Okay. Very bottom, Nun Heum and Beis. Just left off. Tanur Abonon. We learned in the Braiso. To Sefta Maisesheni, a lochem beim of most Maisesheni. You're outside Yerushalayim, you're not permitted to buy an animal with money of Maisesheni. What's money of Maisesheni? Originally, you had fruit that was Maisesheni produced, and you transferred the Kedusha onto that money. So, the money, what are you supposed to do with that money? You should take that money, preferably, take the Yerushalayim, and purchase food with it. Because initially, what were you supposed to do with the Kedusha? As produce, you're supposed to eat that produce of Yerushalayim. That's a thorough law. So now that you transfer the kedusha onto, onto mm -hmm. the money, what are you supposed to do with that money? You should purchase something which was the equivalent of the original produce, as long as it's inedible, to buy food. But rather than taking the money to he purchased an animal outside Yushalayim. Are you permitted? A lokim beima mos masvesheni. You should not purchase, you're not permitted to buy an animal with money which has Kedusha's Masasheni out of Yushalayim. Let's say Rashi again here. What's the reason? If the whole objective of purchasing, taking the money to Yushalayim is to purchase something which is inedible, so what's wrong with buying the animal outside Yushalayim? You transfer it onto produce, and now you take the money and you purchase the animal, so where did the Kedusha go? It went from the money onto the, onto the animal. So now the animal has Kedusha's Masasheni, correct? To be used. And what, when they would buy an animal, what would they, what would they do with the animal? They'd use it as a shlomim. It would be brought as a sacrifice, so the person, the Kohen, would have his portion, and the Yisrael, the one who would bring, would have his portion. And a certain portion would be burnt on the Mizbech, in, you know, the fats. We'll see them, and we'll see the Gemara, we'll discuss it. Why? So Rashi offers two reasons. So Rashi says something which Tosus has difficulty with. This. It says that when you transfer the Dusha Masasheni, it has to be transferred onto a minted coin. So therefore, when you transfer it from the money onto an animal, the animal is not a minted coin. Therefore, you should, you're not permitted to do this, even though we'll see in a moment it's effective. Although you shouldn't do it, but it's effective. Because we're concerned, let's say the, the money has a certain value. So you buy an animal for the value of, of the money. In fact, by the time you arrive in Shalayim, just in terms of the wear and tear of the animal, the trip, the animal is going to be diminished, and the animal is going to be worth less when you arrive in Shalayim. You take the money, the money, the value remains the same value. So when you purchase the animal in Shalayim, you're purchasing with a food, it's the value of the money. But if you purchase the animal out of Yushalayim, you have to travel, the animal during the, just the, tr the, the wear of the trip will diminish its value, so ultimately you could have less value than originally. Now it's interesting. I just want to bring something out. Morrisonism of Mitzio, that if you have Hegdish Shovim Mona, you have something that was consecrated worth $100, and you transfer it onto something that's worth one penny, is it a valid transfer? It's valid. Even though if a person goes and purchases something, which is, it's more than a sixth, it's not a valid, it's not a valid transaction. It's called bitl mecca. I mean, how do you take something worth endless, endlessly more than what it's transferred onto, and why is it a valid transfer? Right? But it's called chilu. See, this is different. When a person, person purchases something, you buy something, what are you doing? You're transferring... No, you're transferring ownership rights. That's when you, when you, when I sell you something, my in, in, innate rights in the object, I'm transferring to you for what? For a certain value. Unless you pay value, because there I'm selling the object. If I consecrate an animal, let's say to be a shlom, whether it's a thousand dollars or it's worth five, whatever it is, now it gets a blemish. Is there a difference between the kedusha on the thousand dollar animal and the and the five hundred dollar animal? It's the same kedusha. It's the Kedusha of what's called Kedusha Shlomi. 
So when you transfer off, when the Torah says, if it should receive a blemish, we preserve the Kedusha, and we use that Kedusha. It's not using the, uh, the animal, the value of the animal. That Kedusha, because initially was consecrated to be used on the Mizbeach, that Kedusha has to be used on the Mizbeach. It should be utilized. So even if you take an animal of lesser value, and you purchase that animal of lesser value, you tr the Kedusha goes on that, and ultimately you are bringing a Shlomim, Kedusha Shlom, which was originally with consecration. Even though the animal you consecrated may have been worth $1,000, but what did I consecrate? Meaning the transfer only happened of the animal or the object. Let's say I consecrated the table. What did I do? Because I, I consecrated the table, now it becomes Hegdish's asset. So the asset become Hegdish is a consequence of the Kedusha. So if I transfer the Kedusha off, now the Kedusha, now it's no longer Hegdish's asset. Once the Kedusha goes off of it. But I'm not transferring... The, 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 the method of transfer is not transferring rights. It's transferring Kedusha. Therefore, Hegdish is Shove Mona. Hegdish could be worth 100. You transfer on the Shove Pruta, it's valid. For instance, the Gemara says in Avodah uh, Zerub Raisa, today we don't consecrate anything. Because what are you going to do with it? We have no base of Migdosh. And if you do consecrate, it creates a problem. So it says you redeem it on a Shove Pruta, and then you go when you dispose of it. You put away the penny. But again, but today it's the right thing to do. Because to transfer onto something of greater value, you're only creating a, a greater problem. So you, you transfer on something on the most minimal value, it has to be minimally a Shavet Pruta. Transfer to Shavet Pruta and you put the Pruta away. You bury it or whatever, it, whatever you do with it. And that, that's, that's, that's L'chat Chilo. That is the, the right way to do it today. Time to be some English, of course, it could be utilized for the refurbishment or to be used for as a Korban, it should be value for value. But the evidence, if you didn't do value for value, it's valid. Okay? So over here we're talking about it's a transfer. You take produce, you transfer it onto money. Now I take the money and purchase an animal. See, even though ultimately the animal is going to be worth less in Yushalayim when it, when it arrives because of the wear and tear, the animal is going to be diminished. Factually, it's, it's a, there I say it's a valid transfer. But if the haloch is vitzarta kesu biodecho, because these gzersa kosu, that outside Yushalayim you can only transfer onto minted coins. So if that's the case, why, why is it a valid transfer? Because the Gemara is going to say, the, the Tosefta says, if a person did it, Bishogeg, it's a valid transfer. He didn't know the Halach. Mistakenly, he took the money and he transferred it. He purchased an animal. So because it was done inadvertently, we say, we'll see, we'll differentiate. But Mezid Talit. If he does it deliberately, it's considered a valid transfer. But you have to transfer something onto minted coins. In fact, he didn't transfer onto minted coins. So it's a different, different question. But Rashi offers two reasons. Just go a little, a little further into the Tosef. Because that, that, that's explicit in the Torah. The Torah says it's preferable to take the produce regardless of, 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 of deterioration, of decomposition, of spoilage. The Torah, Torah says clearly. He says, but if it's too difficult, too cumbersome, the, 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 the distance is too far, we allow it. So transferring out to money is really, it's not a first, first choice. It's only if a person feels it's too difficult, then the Torah allows it. What about spoilage? Torah says, okay, it's irrelevant spoilage. That's where Rashi. That's where Rashi learns. Rashi is learning this. So we're going to ask in a moment. But it says, "Im lokach b'shogi yachzu domim lukoman." If mistakenly purchased the animal, so we say we'll see in a moment. It's a mekatos, right? Because the person himself would prefer to have the money. The per person mistakenly purchased an animal with it. He didn't realize that the money that he used to purchase the animal was my sashemi. So then the we say the money who the, mo the seller has, he has to return the money. Because we say that the, it, it was a mistaken sale. Because the, the buyer never wanted to use my sashemi to buy the animal. He thought he was using his own money. The mazid, 
But he says, but if he doesn't deliberately, Talib Vitokha Bimokum. He the sale was a valid sale because he did it intentionally. The buyer and the seller both are aware of it. And he takes the animal and he eats it bimokum. Mokum means Rashes. Mokum Yushalim is called the Mokum, the place. He takes it to the location. not transferred off. We say it's, it was never a sale. It was never a valid transfer. Mm -hmm. The animal. But how did the animal get Kedusha? I mean, originally you thought you were... You thought you no, 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 no. He, he had produce transferred onto an animal or onto coins then purchased an animal. And now the person is not able to want to take the kedusha of the animal, transfer it back onto coins, other coins. Then it becomes the one their animal. Correct. Correct. We'll see in a moment. Could you transfer? Could you transfer it onto coins? Once you've trained, we'll see, we'll see the various halachas relating to this, which you're asking. Simply, you can. On a Torah level, you can. Once the trance takes place, you've removed the Kedusha. It's Chulam. Correct, 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 correct. Because it's not consecrated. Consecrated. Because this, this, is, this is just a trance of Masashani. Consecrated. If something's consecrated for the Mizbeach, unless it, it becomes blemished. And once it becomes blemished, you can't work with that animal any longer. Restrictions. There are restrictions on that animal. But that's only because it had Kedusha's Mizbeach, because it was consecrated for the Mizbeach. But other levels of transfer, it's not, this is not the case. Let's see, let's see Tosis in a minute. Elochim Beim Masasheni. The Tosefta says you're not permitted to buy an animal with the money of Masasheni. Pirsh Kunches, Chutz Yushalayim. Outside Yushalayim. Once you get to Yushalayim, you're permitted, but outside Yushalayim. Why? Mishum dechsiv, ba'atzarto akes biyodecho. You should take the, the coined silver in your hand to Yushalayim. The Torah pido bekesef tzura. The reason is because the Torah wants you should transfer the Kedusha Masashenim only onto kesef tzura, onto minted coins, not onto an animal. V'yol shem etichochesh bederech, betorech haderech. It may be diminished as a result of the difficulty of the trip. The lonely hero. Tosa says it's not acceptable. Rashi's two reasons are not acceptable to him. Here. That's only when you want to transfer, purchase something which is not inedible. That that we say that you're not permitted to purchase something out of, outside of Yushalayim Unless it's a minted coin, that's only if it's a non-edible. Because whatever, if you transfer something which is inedible, what do you do with that? Again, you have to sell it. You understand? But over here, if this is going to be the item which I'm going to be eating in Yushalayim, there's nothing. One doesn't need a minted coin. Minted coin means when you're taking a transfer onto a non-edible, it has to be minted. But if you transfer it onto an object, which that object you're going to eat in Yushalayim, it's not a problem. He says it's explicit. The Gemara says, Mavakam, listen to the story. Let's say a person initially transfers the Kedusha from the produce onto a certain type of coinage in Bavel. And at one time, those coins were, 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 were circulated in Yushalayim. If you take Yushalayim, you'd be able to spend them, purchase food. Then they took them out of circulation. These coins are only in circulation in Iraq, but not in Yushalayim. So what do you do with the coins? So the Gemara says, Zovin You purchase an animal in Bovil. So initially it was transferred onto the coins. Now these coins, you can't purchase anything in Yushalayim with it. Since you take the coins in Bovil, you purchase an animal. You take that animal, take to Yushalayim. Alma, so what do we see from the Gemara in Bovakama, Lobino Keset Tzura. So you see, outside Yushalayim, you were able to transfer onto something, although it's not minted coins. 
You take from a minted coin purchasing an animal, and over there it's lechatchilo. Since the money itself cannot be spent in Yerushalayim, because it no longer circulates in Yerushalayim, it was taken out of your circulation, so you see, permitted. He says, Mil lishnu deshem etakish lo koshek kulahay. According to Rashi's interpretation, why you should not purchase the animal, because it may be diminished, that it's not a difficult from our above comma. Why? He says, I have a choice. If I take the coins to Shalim, they have no value whatsoever. No value. But if I take the animal, although it may be diminished, I'll have 80% of its original value. So there it's just a question. You're actually, you're not being fair to the, in terms of the expenditure of what? Of the Maish It's not going to be fully utilized. So if you have the Kedusha on the money, and the money has no value because you can't purchase Yushalayim. And I can take an animal, although it will be diminished, it's a better choice to take the animal than take the money. I have the case of Tzura, but according to Rashi's interpretation, when you transfer Kedusha out to Yushalayim, it can only be onto a minted coin. Kosha, Tuva, precious. It's difficult. If actually you're not permitted to do it, Unless it's a minted coin, so if you have coins which don't circulate, how do you purchase an animal? Outside Yushalayim, it has to be coinage which is minted, and this is not being transferred onto a minted coin. To purchase, to purchase food, to purchase food. So let's say originally, let's say originally, when originally was transferred onto the Babylonian money, the money already was taken out of circulation. Seemingly, probably wasn't valid, because what's the value of transferring onto money? Correct. I, I'd say it's not a. I, no, 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 no. Originally, the money was did circulate in Yerushalayim. Then it became a discontinued coin. So initially, when the transfer was done, it was a valid transfer. Now I have a choice. Take the coin to Yushalayim, which has no value. You can't purchase with the coin. Or buy the animal. So Mars says, well, come and buy the animal. So if you say the reason is, the reason why we don't want you to transfer on the animal, because you can have less value rather than taking the coin. So over here, if the question has no value, or it has less value. Better have less value than no value. But if the reason is to only allows this transfer out to Yushalayim onto a minted coin, factually the animal is not a minted coin. Transfer. Now, if it's going to be reduced to nothing, there's no question. But let's say it's going to have, it's no worse than taking something worth $100 and transferring it off to something worth a, which is worth a penny, right? It's no worse than that. No, but if you can't use your shalom, then it has no value in your shalom. No, th so that's why I said the case is speak. Initially, when it was transferred, the mm -hmm. coin did circulate in Yerushalayim. Then it was discontinued. So now, factually, it has Kedusha, because the, the original transfer was a valid transfer. So do we, as it says, we allow you to transfer, we, we encourage to transfer onto an animal. Onto, an, onto another coin, you couldn't transfer onto another coin. No, it's not Rabin. It's a Torah. It's a, Rashi learns it's a Torah law. Rashi is the first r interpretation. Right? It's a Torah law. Al to Yushalayim and it's be transferred onto a minted coin. So it's the difficulty. There we don't have a minted coin. You're transferring it onto something that, that, which is an animal. But Rashi, 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 Rashi. Rashi is talking about over here. We're talking about a minted coin that's Kedushish Maishashani. So it's transferred already onto a minted coin. Over there, like it says, tomorrow above a comma. So Rashi says, why sh are you not permitted to buy the animal? Because they said, when you transfer Kedusha's Masha, it has to be on a minted coin. Right, so he's saying that even if you already transferred the minted coin, you can't use that minted coin, to, you can't transfer that minted coin to give it to something else 
that's not minted. Except Yerushalayim, that's Rashi. Right. So we say, but, but the Gemara above comes differently. That's Tosas Kasha and Rashi. You, you're answering Tosas Kasha. No, Good, that's the difficult. Okay, so that's Tosas difficult Rashi. But the second shot Rashi says it's not difficult. Of course, even though it will be diminished, it's a question of using the Kedusha or not using it whatsoever. So we prefer to have lesser value rather than no value. That's it. So what do you, what do you want to say? But there's a Torah law going to Rashi, the first shot he says. Even though initially it was valid. Yeah, but then you see, but no, but no, 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 no. But so how do how do you understand the more above a comma? So if that's the case, what are you transferring the kedusha from the money onto an animal, right? The the original produce reverts back to its original holy status, kedusha status, according to you. If the original transfer of the money, because the money was taken out of circulation, retroactively is not a valid transfer, so we're back. So what? The money has no value. So what if you take the money and purchase an animal? That's the mercism of a comma. If the money no longer has value, shall I purchase an animal with it? And what am I accomplishing? The money is ordinary money according to you, because retroactively the original trans, trans, transfer was not a. No, the produce, produce, produce. But still. The person that has a mech, it's, it's like a mechatos. Doesn't make a difference. What about if you have a mechatos? I purchase something, you sell me something that's what? And now the object is gone. The, the, the transaction is not a valid transaction, regardless. If initially retroactive transaction, it's not, tr it's not, it's not a transaction. But, but I'm saying, but you see, clearly that's not the case. The, trans, the original transfer was a valid transfer. Okay. See, the question I don't hear to be that strong. As I said, factually, according to Rashi, how do we understand the Tosef that we're quoting? It says, if a person deliberately purchases an animal out to Yushalayim with money, we say, the person that's take the animal, you know Yushalayim. Ida Torah says, Vetzat So you see, factually, when the person, even though he does the wrong thing, it's, it's, it's what? It's valid. It's valid. Right? So over there, maybe it's not so wrong because you have no choice. Because over there, it's worthless. The money today is worthless in Yerushalayim. Okay, let's see how Tosis learns. Lekach ni lori. Therefore, the re explains the forest. I know time the lochem beim is gzei roshem yegadil adorim adorim. You have the reason. Vochanami amin perk lulav agosul. Let's see, transfer the, transfer the money onto the animal. And now the person feels, in the meantime, the animal becomes impregnated and has a calf. Mm -hmm. So what happens now? What's the status of the calf? You have herds. They all have kedusha. It creates a, sim it creates a serious complication. And the person may keep the animal till it gives birth, and then you lose track. The kamar over there it says in the Mishnah that you could transfer the most Mashashani onto an animal, whether they were alive or slaughtered, you could transfer the Kedusha. So slaughtered makes, makes sense because it has value. If the animal or the bird was slaughtered, you could transfer it. But on living animal, you cannot, or bird. Or masik, what's the machloks remain the chachomim? Machloks b'schorim. They're arguing only a male, a male animal, a male bird. We'll see. Avu bin the kevos divri akol a mischalim al chayin. Yeah, on the road. No, back in at home, back home. Shema yigadl min adorim, adorim, because you may actually raise herds. Or b'schorim priligi yigazrina on b'schorim, but in the kevos is low. The Rameyah lo goza. Rameyah is not concerned. You may confuse the males with the females. Bona gazi, vochi komer. E lochin gzeris chorim otin kevis. Eh? 
as my Sushani, as my Sushani. Yeah, because it's, it's one entity. It just keeps, keeps being transferred from just an expression of that. Okay? So let's get back to the Gemara. You're not permitted to purchase an animal outside Yushalayim with, most, with money of Masashengi. And if you did purchase it mistakenly, the money is returned to the buyer. So Rashi says, why? We actually we force, we force the seller to return the money to the buyer. The Mekartosu because it's a mistaken purchase. Why? He would never want the animal. Why? Because if that's the case, he has an animal, he has to now transport the animal. So it's a tremendous burden for him. So he would prefer, he prefers to, to tra take the money and not take an animal. If he would have known the money was Masashani, that means now the animal's Masashani. So that he's forced to take the animal. He's not just taking the animal. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to make a toast, it's, it's a mistaken sale. Therefore, we force the seller to return the money to the buyer. Okay? The mazid, what happens if the person's aware? The purchaser's aware, the most Masashani, and he purchases it? Tala v'tochu b'mokum. So we say the Kedusha transfers onto the animal and takes the animal, eats it in Yerushalayim. So I'm showing from Rashi, but if you're learning according to the first pattern of Rashi, Tos is asking a question on Rashi from Morim Bava Kama. It says, V'tzakta Akesa, when you transfer from the money, it has to be onto a, a minted coin. But it says, you do it deliberately, the animal has Kedusha's Masashani, and he takes the Yerushalayim. Right? Uh, I, but it's not a minted coin. So you see what? Factually, it works. So either Rashi means it doesn't mean it's a minted coin, right? Since the Torah says when you transfer Kedusha, you should be on the minted coin, that's the preferable way to do it. Therefore, rabbinically, we don't want you to transfer anything but the minted coin. That's what the Torah that So therefore, if you do it deliberately, out to Shalayim, with the evidence, it's valid. Because on the Torah level, it's valid, as Tosa says. So with that, everything's answered. The Morabah Vakama. Morabah Vakama have no choice. If you have no choice, it's no worse than doing it deliberately. I mean, one of Tosi has a question about Gemara. That's my difficulty. How could Rashi say it's not a valid transfer? If it's done outside Yushalayim, here it says if he does it deliberately, the Kedusha transfers from the coin onto the animal, right? It says explicitly. And the money which the seller has is ordinary money now. Of course, the Kedusha transferred from the money onto the animal. What does he have to go ask a question from Moran Bavakama? So you say, because maybe it's l'chadchila. L'chadchila, right? Even as a first choice over there, you buy the animal. Here it's a b'dievet. He did something wrong. Om Rav Yudo. So Rav Yudo says, Medvar amurim b'miskavim lokach t'chilo l'shem shlomim. Yeah. He says, when we say over here that he did it, when he intended to buy the animal, it's only if he intended to purchase it for the sake to use it as a shlomim, to consecrate it as a shlomim. But if his intention was that he wanted to transfer the Kedusha off the money, that the money should become ordinary money, then we say, Bishogeg means, as we said before, where he's unaware because of Mechatos or Mezid, we penalize him, and we say the money has to be returned. The money retains as much. If he, the reason why he's purchasing the animal is because he wants the money to be ordinary money, we, we won't tolerate it. Rashi says, L'shem shlomim, shekein derech kol behemish nikochos bekesem mazel korev shlomim. He says, the money that's purchased, purchased with Masashani, it was brought as a shlomim, kedi alfinim shlomim nochos, shom shom zavach to shlomim, v'chalto shom. What do you do with that animal? It says, you should eat it there, v'masek siv v'chalto shom. As it says in regard to shlomim, it says, v'zavach to shlomim v'chalto shom. Mos v'ashen yishiru, it says shom. So therefore, with, what, what should you use the animal for? L'chul shlokha l'ol l'chutz l'mokum. What about he purchased the animal to eat it? As, as an ordinary animal, then we penalize him. 
Then we say the sales that even though your intention was to purchase, you wear it with Masashani, and you're buying an animal and you eat it outside Yushalayim, we invalidate the sale. We penalize the purchaser and the seller, we say the sale is not valid. I understand. But here, this is the Raisa. Here he's intending to eat the animal outside Yushalayim. That's what he's learning. So Shogeg, he says, Lava miskavan loti l'chumakoy. He says, Avaloka l'shem chulin, the maze of the day, miskavan loti masal l'chulin. He wants to take the money. It should be, or the hubeng shu, be maze, yazu dom l'kom, shogim shumekach toos. The katil l'mocher. Now the question, because we penalize the seller. Yep. It's interesting. The man goes, the seller goes and sells an animal to a person who wants to transfer the Gdusha off the money. So uh, who's at fault? The buyer or the seller? The seller's, the buyer's aware that the most mo is money, Masashen, he wants to buy an animal. And why does he want to buy the animal? Because he wants to transfer the Gdusha off the money. He wants an animal. He wants to buy, eat an animal, not take Gdusha line. So we say to the seller, the money that you have is Masashani, you have to return the money. So basically, what are we, we're penalizing the seller, right? We should penalize the buyer, we'll see in a moment. So the is going to say, because when a, a mouse steals, if it wouldn't have a hole to hide what it takes, would it, would it, would it steal? So it says, it's not achbura ganva, it's chura ganva. The mouse is not the thief, it's the hole that it goes and hides, it's what it steals, that, that's the thief. So if the buyer didn't have a person to sell the animal, to purchase it from, he would have converted it. So why is he converting it? Because the seller has the animal to sell to him. Rashi, he's, he's in violation of the Mirshul. If the buyer is aware, the seller is aware, the man, he's aware that the money that he's purchasing with is Masa Shani money. They're both aware. The buyer is aware, the seller is aware. What he's selling to the animal. He's not telling he's taking the animal to Yerushalayim. Maize and mean he's purchasing it. We'll see because the average person it, is not fully aware of the halacha. He's not aware of the halacha. The Gemara is going to, of course, the Gemara is going to ask a question. It says in the Mishnah that if you're Makadish a woman, most Masashani, she's Makudeshis. Right? She, she's married. Let's be concerned. She's going to take the money. She'll spend it outside Yushalayim. Correct? She, now she has money. So Gemara is going to answer speaking of Isha Chaveira. The woman herself, she's very learned. And because she's aware of all the halachas, we're not concerned, she's going to abuse the money. She'll utilize the money as it should be used. But the average person who doesn't know, we invalidate the sale because we're concerned the halacha will be violated. That's the reason why when it's done deliberately, we say to the person, we say to the person, the sale is not valid. Because you shouldn't have sold him the animal. What? Both, both. The buyer and the seller are aware. Because we're, we're concerned the animal will be eaten out to Yushalayim. Right? So the Gemara is going to ask in a moment. Okay? So Gemara asks a question. How could we say over here that if the buyer and the seller are aware that it's most Maishashemi, that we invalidate the sale because we say the money is going to be eaten outside Yushalayim? It's the Mishnah says that if a man takes most of he marries a woman with the money, she's married. He's aware, she's aware. And she's agreeable to take the money, she's married. Because Rabbi Yehul, most of is what? Is mom and hedged. It's his, his asset. Omer Abloza, Ishi Odas, She'in most of Masashen, Mishal, and Yodo, Vol of Alchos, Mishalayim. Since she's aware that the money itself retains its Kedusha, she'll take the money and eat in Yushalayim. She'll spend it in Yushalayim. So Mar asks, Maskal or Rebirmi of Rebbehima Tmei of Avodim Bekarkos, the Odim Yodeh Shein Mos Masashim Mishal Aleyin. What about a person purchases a non kosher species with the money, or slaves or property, that a person understands that the money itself, the transit, is not valid, meaning it's not a proper thing to do. With not a lochem Rebbehima Tmei Avodim Bekarkos Mos Masashini, Avidu Shalayim. Even a person purchases these various items, even in Shalayim, not outside of Shalayim. Again, if the purpose is what? To purchase something to eat. So if it's not a kosher species, you're not able to eat it. If it's a slave, it has not, it's not food value or, or property. And if you did, if you purchased these items, 
Yochel Kinegdon. You have to take money, the equivalent of them, and transfer the Kedusha from them onto that money. It would transfer it, then you have to take other money and transfer it. El Hocha Bisha Chaveir Askinon, the Yodo. One second. We're speaking about Isha Chaveira. She's a learned woman. So therefore, we're not concerned. We're not concerned that what? That she's going to do the wrong thing. But the average person who's not fully aware of the halacha, we're concerned he may do the wrong thing. He'll eat the animal, so when he deliberately buys the animal outside Yushalayim, he may actually eat the animal outside Yushalayim, which is which in this Doraisa. I'll tell, no, 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 like this. Factually, it's not a valid transfer. It's not a valid transfer. The money that the seller has is, is, is still most masashemi. It's not a valid transfer. It's not because we penalize the seller. The seller goes and sells the buyer a non kosher species. So we say to the buyer, since the seller has the money, you have to take money, the equivalent of the money, and say the kedusha of that money that the seller has is transferred onto your money. So therefore, otherwise the the, the seller is going to do the wrong thing. The seller is going to do the wrong thing. He's going to use the the money, never transferred. It, correct. It stays with the money. But now, because you gave that money to the seller who sold you the non kosher item, he's going to be in violation of utilizing that money. So therefore, we penalize the buyer and say, you know something, you have to take the equivalent of that money. But, it's, but, but I, I'm not interested in the money. I'm not interested in having the, the non-kosher species and the, and, and the money. So well, we penalize you. You shouldn't have got entered into that transaction initially, and you transfer the Kedusha off that money to go onto the money, that, the equivalent of that money. That's what we say. Okay? The equal the ki shokal mosa dait las kidush live shokalu. So Rashi says, but before when we said, He says, the, the case, the mocher doesn't know. So the money that he has is what? It's, it was not a valid transfer. So the mocher, the seller, believes that the money he has is ordinary money. But factually, what does he have? The money he has is not ordinary money. He believes it's ordinary, but it has Kedusha. So due to the buyer's interest in purchasing that animal, he's causing the seller to be in violation. Therefore, we say to the buyer, you must take the equivalent value, transfer the Kedusha from that money onto the money that you have. The money, the money that the seller has, it has Kedusha. So what about, but what about our Mishnah? says that if he marries the woman knowing it is and she's aware, it's valid. Let's be concerned the same thing. We should say to the husband that, you know, you should take the equivalent money and transfer it back. There's no, we say we leave things as they are. The answer is speaking, Isha Chavera. She's a learned woman. She's fully aware of the halacha. And she mm -hmm. will take the money to Shalayim to use it as it should be used.